Hello, and welcome to Dove and Serpent Tarot. This is a reading for Virgo. If Virgo is your sun, moon, or rising sign, this is your reading. Please hit the like button, leave a comment, and consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. Now, this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger. And I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards, especially this star card, and use your own intuition to take it beyond the details that I might provide. Okay. Remember that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. And we're starting with that star card. We're going to put that into some context with our Dove and Serpent spread. And if there's anything you would like me to pray over or meditate upon or send positive energy toward, please let me know. Although I think I should be asking you for blessings. This star energy, really, really powerful. Finishing up Path of the Serpent here, we see that you are doing great things with that star energy. You are making it work for you. It is manifesting in a physical way, right? This is the, this is the blessing. This is the grace. These are the miracles that are happening thereby. All right? Very, very nice. We're going to do a mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. We're going to use the Wait Smith deck. Oh, gosh. Another card jumping out of the, out of the deck today. This will be our mystery card. We're going to set the frog on top so that card doesn't go anywhere. We also have this Page of Swords or Princess of Swords that, that comes out. And this is interesting because the other card, the second one, after the star, is the Ace. Right? So I, I feel, honestly, that the page or princess of swords is the bridge between the blessings, the grace, the miracles, and the physical manifestation of them, right? The, the actual appearance of them in your life. We may feel the blessing and the grace and the enlightenment and the, that spiritual religious feeling, the holiness. It's here we feel inspired. We feel the grace and the bliss. This is all of that manifesting in our life. And this is the bridge between the two, the princess of swords. This is you knowing how to interpret the signs and synchronicities and the blessings and the miracles from heaven, from the universe, from the stars, and translate them into a practical life, right? So this card here, we're going to use this as the bridge. That's going to be the bridge. I don't know if it should really go there. I don't, not really a standard part of my spread here. We'll just bridge it like that because it's going to take us from the path of the dove to the path of the serpent. Now, first thing that we experience is this star energy. I feel like you, you have an influx of this spiritual energy right now. You're noticing it. You're feeling it. Uh, maybe it comes to you in dreams. Maybe it's in your interactions with the world. Everything has a bit of a holiness to it. Everything's got a bit of of a shine, like everything is just kind of uh, touched by starlight right now, you know? A real feeling of holiness, it's almost a, 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 um, a spiritual experience, you know? Um, there seems to be an almost zen-like state with you where you're just almost in a different world or a different dimension. Even when you're out here and, and right now with me, um, it feels like if I really look at you, you're radiating starlight, okay? Which is kind of blinding, creates a bit of a haze, you know, when you're on the, at night on the freeway or something and really bright headlights are in front of you and it kind of makes everything a little bit, a little bit hazy, you know? At least with me, maybe it's my astigmatism, I don't know. But that's the feeling that I'm getting, that you're just kind of radiating the starlight now, and it's just, um, it's like it's here, it's, it's within you, it's all around you. And it's just a matter of you now taking that and putting that into action, doing something with that, right? Manifesting it, grounding it, touching the earth somewhere so that it can flow into everything around you and make everything grow, right? Really beautiful energy. And so with this uh, blessing, this grace, this, um, this heavenly light, this spiritual light that is surrounding you right now and radiating from you, 
it creates this clarity. This, this is the Zen-like state. This is all of your chakras activated, especially the, uh, the crown chakra, the thousand petaled lotus. Um, full activation, okay? And with that comes kind of an infinite clarity. This is a calm and a peace and a clearness that contains the entire universe, right? Contains every idea that ever, ever could be, ever was, ever will be, or, or you know what I mean? It's everything, but it's also nothing. It's that, it's calmness, it's stillness. And it really is this tremendous gift you're being given right now. Okay, tremendous gift. And to have both of these together is one kind of gift, right? You've got this grace, this blessing, this spiritual light, and you've got the clarity and the enlightenment to know what to do with it. You know what it means. You know where to channel that, okay? But as the icing on the cake, we have so much more. We've got the full energy at the top. This is you always, uh, I think you've always had this desire to learn, to experience, to expand your awareness, right? You never wanted to live under a rock, you know? You wanted to be out in the world. You wanted to, to know things and travel and learn and experience. You wanted to always be surprised. You always want to, to do something new and novel right? You chase after that feeling of doing something for the first time. You know, I, for some reason, I'm getting an image of you in um, Europe somewhere, maybe France or something, like watching someone cook, learning how to cook from like a, um, a master chef, you know, they're showing you how to do something, maybe baking or something, because there's flour everywhere. Um, so it's just doing these things for the first time. That's that's the feeling to chase. That's just, that's the, um, that's the expand, expansive uh, awareness. You know, I feel like you've always been that way. I feel like right now, it's even more prominent in your life. This, this desire, this, it's almost this starlight now is kind of, it's radiating so much that you can't help but expand with it and radiate out into the furthest corners of the universe. The fool is a card, is an energy that has lost all self-awareness, is just pure light, pure air, pure expansiveness, has no consciousness of self, right? And that's what makes the fool the fool, right? Because, you know, the fool could be out there in the world doing whatever uh, kind of catches its interest, right? R real innocent, um, just wants to experience everything, wants to do everything new. Everything is novel. Everything is exciting. Everything is, is, um, has the sense of adventure and curiosity, but you know, may get itself into some trouble, may stumble and trip, maybe knock some things over. Um, but has no self-consciousness, has no sense. Ha there's no embarrassment, right? The fool is not aware of self to even be embarrassed or self-conscious, or to even know that, oh, we might have trampled off the edge of a cliff or, or trampled on some flowers or whatever. There's no awareness of that. You can't really blame the fool for being the fool because that's its nature. Um, and, and this is part of, of your energy right now. I think it's part of your focus. You want this expansive life. You have this yearning to go and experience everything new. You want to kind of travel to a different country and learn one of their traditions. It's new. It's, it's exciting. I've never done this before. It's a strange place, strange people, strange ingredients. And I'm learning how to, you know, put it all together. And it's exciting. And I don't have to be self-conscious. I don't have to be embarrassed. Um, it's just, it's a pure experience. And so you want that. And then when we get down here to the practical, there's a practical component to that. There's the fool and there's the universe or the world, right? So it seems, it, it feels to me, honestly, that every card here has its counterpart on the path of the dove and the path of the serpent. Okay. 
It all begins with the starlight. This is the spiritual experience that sets it all off. It leads us to this clarity, this enlightened state, this Zen, this Nirvana, this kind of uh, full activation, right? A real enlightenment. All and nothing, every idea possible. The counterpart for this, then, is the six of sorts. So you're able to put this enlightenment into a plan, into action, into a real structure, a centered, harmonious thought. You're, you're able to manifest this ace into a system, right? Into organized knowledge, like a science, okay? So whatever you, however you choose to manifest this energy, which we're going to see here with the rest of these counterparts, you're, you're, you're getting it down to a science. Okay, so we'll go through these, these counterparts again. So maybe we'll just put these two right here for now. Um, and remember, again, it's the princess of swords that is the bridge between these two paths. The bridge between the theory and the practice, the, um, the abstract and the concrete, the subtle and the gross, the unmanifest, the spiritual, and the manifest, the earthly, practical side of things. So we've got the page of swords and we've got these two getting it down to a science. And it really comes by way of that star energy, so we'll put that there too. And then, of course, we have the fool, that desire for expansiveness, that yearning, that innocence, that no consciousness, no self-consciousness, is just outward awareness and expansiveness. This is the air that wants to fill the container, every corner of the world. Okay, here's your world. Go ahead. Now you can. These two are counterparts. The unmanifest and the manifest, the impulse and the arena, the, um, the, uh, the gas and the container that it's going to fill. Right? So these two go together. And the universe or world card is saying that, you know, obviously you're looking to expand your universe, expand your world. You're not looking to narrow your scope. You're looking to expand, to widen your scope. You want all of it. You want to experience everything, not just a little sliver of things. Okay, so these two cards go together. Oh, they go that way. And now we have the um, seven of discs. This was a lot of hard work. This was a lot of mistakes. It's in the recent past. I know the spread's all messed up now, but it was in the recent past. What's behind you now? Were all of these attempts, false starts, failures, mistakes, uh, inability to really materialize what your plans are, were. These were all the failures that are just the rough drafts for success, right? You're, you're trying and trying and trying, and you're, you're still working at it, okay? But through this enlightened experience, through this star energy, this blessing, these miracles, this grace, this spiritual light, we're taking all of this, and its counterpart is the four. We're now creating the stable success. We're now able to build this. This could be you really, you're trying to build a house. Everything you do fails. You don't know how to build a house. It, um, you're putting nails in the wrong place. You're using the wrong kind of wood or whatever. And we just don't know what we're doing and it's not working. We think we maybe get it. And then, uh, you know, a gentle breeze blows and the thing crumbles back to the ground but through this through this miracle this blessing this star energy this clarity this light now and because now we have it down to a science right we've got that air energy now we know what we're doing and we're able to translate that into success into a stable foundation right now we're building this house and we know what we're doing. It's a very sound house. It's perfect. It's perfect. It's not too big, not too small. But it's perfect. So it was failure. Now it's success. This was kind of what was before and this is what was after. Um, this is a lot of rough drafts. This is your, your final draft, the one that you're going to turn in. Okay. These were the, the attempts and this was the final attempt that works. Okay. And this has to do with your finances or maybe physically building something, maybe with your health and well-being, right? It's physical energy, it's earth energy. As you're trying to grow your garden, right? 
trying to grow your garden. So these two are counterparts. This is really, it's never, never quite been like this before in a reading. Uh, now underneath everything, we've got this three of wands, right? Understanding ourselves, having this spiritual, um, spiritual integrity, knowing who we are, knowing what our, our boundaries, our limits are, having a set of, you know, morals, uh, an ethical kind of uh, stance in life, having a compass, you know, um, knowing what we believe in, knowing who we are. And, um, you know, having the self-awareness of what we will and will not tolerate, like boundaries of our own behavior, the behavior of others, right? Knowing the limits of our own fire energy, our own creativity, a real self-knowledge and understanding more, understanding of ourselves, okay? The counterpart for this, and this is a really good quality, it's always been underneath everything, this has always been the foundation of your life, right? You, you believe in doing what's right, you believe in, in uh, respect and um, being fair and, and uh, tolerance, acceptance, welcoming everyone. You know, but you have limits, of course. The counterpart for this, then, is going to be that two of wands. This is you now able to take what you believe in. What are those things that you hold dear? What are your core ideals, your core beliefs? about the world, about society, uh, about your community. Now you're able to put that into action and actually express that into the world. Now, who you are and what you believe, your stance on social issues or political issues or whatever it is, now you're able to live that out in the world, right? Now, everything that you do is, you can express this. So this is the counterpart here. This is something that, yes, we have this. It's, we have the understanding of it. This is us now uh, manifesting that through our works and our deeds. All right. So these two cards are counterparts. And now I think we can move everything back to the center of the table here. I'm making a real mess of my, my desk here. Um, so that star energy is really what is giving us all of these we have the spirit and we have the, the manifested plane for all of this energy. And this is really something. I, I haven't quite seen this before in, in a reading. Um, this, is, this is the real miracle here. And uh, this, is, this is very unique. Very unique. And the final thing that we have is this moon energy. And the moon energy maybe can go right down here at the bottom. The last kind of synthesis of all of this, because the um, the star energy is still kind of abstract, right? It's a star; it's way out there, right? There, it's far away, right? Uh, even our own star, even the sun, right, is very far away. But if this is the star, if this is the heavens, and the grace, the blessing, the bliss, the miracles that are coming into your life, these are still way out there. What we have down here is the sun and the moon. The sun's right here at the bottom of this card, just about to crest over the horizon. It is what is uh, illuminating the lunar worlds, the lunar realm. Um, the more uh, subtle, energetic kind of perception of, of stuff, of reality, you know. Um, so it's like this star energy, this heavenly energy, this bliss, is now manifesting down here as a sun and a moon. Right? Something a lot closer to the earth. Right? It's not so abstract and far away. It's not up there in heaven. Now it's down here on earth with us, with you. So this is showing how you are taking all of this spiritual energy and manifesting it. And as we go down, then we have the final kind of crystallization of it as the sun. Right? It's like a, a star is coming from heaven, coming down to earth, and that is your ball of fire, your sun, right? That, like our sun. Um, our sun's a star, too. I don't know if you know that. Uh, but it's so much closer to us. It's one that we can feel its warmth. We can feel its love and light. It's not so abstract. It's not so far away. Now it's right here with us, within us, 
right next to us where we can feel it and we can experience it. We can rely on it. We can take guidance from it. We can see now because of that sunlight. We can see what's going on here. And, um, well, it's that light and heat that is helping us manifest all of these miracles, right? I hope I'm making sense. This is a little bit metaphysical, I guess, but we're going from the spirit the spirit realm to the earth realm. From the spirit realm here, because of this sunlight, now we're manifesting it and we're able to grow this abundance. I hope this is somewhat clear. Um, it, it really is, I think, a one-of-a-kind reading for you, Virgo, and I, I think we need to get to this mystery card here. Um, put it right here in the middle. I don't know what the heck this could be, except maybe a six, maybe in an art or a temperance card, maybe it'll be that sun, right? Maybe it'll be the sun card. What's well, an ace of cups? That's even better, I think. Uh, the ace of cups is the bliss, is the blessing, is that holy, holy water um, that is really being produced by all of this, that all of this is kind of um, being nourished or baptized by this holy water. It all is going to have this intense sense of joy and purpose. This is the bliss with which you do all of this work. And this is the bliss that is produced through all of this work. And I think the connection, we didn't really speak much about, I can't get it off the table, about the Page of Swords. The Page of Swords really is taking the air energy, taking this enlightenment, and working it into a science, working out a plan for all of this activity, right? This is a lot of experimentation, a lot of trial and error. This is, this is working it out. This is the process of figuring out what to do with this enlightened energy, okay? Um, and this may be a, a fairly new thing. So it, you might have kind of like wobbly feet at first. You know, but as you continue to do this and to work with this energy, it's going to get easier and easier because you're going to get stronger and stronger. But the page right now, the page is still learning how to use the energy. Okay, You have to continue trying and practicing in, in order to get better. So this is the link here. This is, again, the bridge that is uh, taking all of this abstract energy and making it very practical, very concrete. Really tremendous blessings in your life right now. I'm really just, I'm overwhelmed right now. Um, anyway, <clears throat> we are going to do an extended, and if you want to stick around, just click up here. Thank you for going on this journey with me. Thank you for being the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot.